nobody likes me. Nobody wants to play with me. I haven't a friend on the whole of Magic Mountain. What nonsense. I've never known a hamster with more friends than you have. Except me, perhaps. Just think of all your friends. There's Jane and Trevor and Dotty and Spot and where are so many others? Doris, you like playing with me, don't you? Of course I do, Morris. Now dry your eyes and wipe your nose. <laughs> Not on your sleeve. And we'll go out and play. And what's more, we'll sing. Boys and girls, come out to play. The moon does shine as bright as day. Come with a whoop and come with a call. Come with a goodwill or not at all. Up the ladder and down the wall. A havenly loaf will serve us all. You'll find milk and I'll find flour. And we'll have a pudding in half an hour. Boys and girls, come out to play. The moon does shine as bright as day. Come with a whoop and come with a call. Come with a goodwill or not at all. Up the ladder and down the wall, a halfpenny loaf will serve us all. You'll find milk and I'll find flour, and we'll have a pudding in half an hour. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> a good old sing song always cheers me up. And you know, Doris, when I think about it, I have got lots of friends, really. I mean, there's Jane and Trevor and Digby and Spot and, and... me. But you're my sister, Doris. Sisters can be friends too, you know. Oh, Doris, sometimes you make me go all warm and soppy inside. Do you remember the last time we made a new friend? Yes, but tell me the story again, Morris. All right, it's called Grandpa's Cave. <laughs> Doris and I couldn't think of anything to do. Then I had an idea. Why don't we go somewhere we've never been before, I said. Where's that old map of Magic Mountain? Doris found the map and we looked at it together. How about the lollipop tree, said Doris. It sounds lovely. We skipped quickly down Magic Mountain. Come on, Doris, I said. Don't stop to pick flowers or we'll never get to the lollipop tree. But it was too late. Doris pulled hard at a big purple flower and ping! A little door opened up at her feet. There were some stone steps winding away out of sight. <gasps> it's a cave, I said. Come on, let's explore. We'll need torches, said Doris. OK, let's say a spell together. Bing, bang, bong, fiddle-dee-dee. Wands make torches so we can see. Suddenly, sparks lit up the sky and big beams of light shone from our wands. Go, I said. Down the steps we went and along a dark, dark tunnel. I think we're lost, said Doris. No, we're not, I said. Look, there's a light ahead. We came round a corner in the tunnel and saw a big round shape and a fire. There was a man standing beside a big pot, mumbling lots of strange words. He wore a huge purple robe with signs on it, just like the signs on my hat. Who are you? I asked. Why, Grandpa the Wizard, of course, said the man. Now look what you've done. You've upset my spell for magic soup. Doris looked inside the pot. Oh, well, she said, you haven't put any moonbeams in. Magic soup must have moonbeams. How do you know? asked Grandpa. We are magic hamsters, said Doris brightly. We know all sorts of magic things. 
are, but there are lots of things on Magic Mountain that you don't know, said Grandpa. We'd love to learn more about Magic Mountain, I said. Will you teach us? Of course, said Grandpa, but just now I have work to do. Come and see me soon. You don't need to come down the tunnel. Just say this spell and I will appear. Grandpa Wizard, come and see Morris and Doris by the lollipop tree. That's where we were going, said Doris. So we were, I said. But just then, Grandpa waved his purple robe above our heads and the next moment, Doris and I were above the ground again, standing by the purple flower. Let's come and see Grandpa soon, said Doris. Yes, let's, I said. And as we set off home, we could hear strange music floating up from under the ground. Spell Grandpa told us to say if we wanted to see him again. Yes. Well, shall we say it and see if it works? Oh, yes. Ready? Grandpa, Grandpa Wizard, Wizard, come and see Morris and Doris by the lollipop tree. Hello, you two. And it works. And look, there's the lollipop tree. Help yourselves to a lollipop and come and tell me what you've been up to. <gasps> Lollipops, yum, yum. Grandpa, it's time for a story. Will you come and listen with us? Of course I will. What's the story about? Mr Stick and Mr Stone. Mr Stick and Mr Stone were next-door neighbours. Their homes were joined together down the middle, but they looked exactly alike. Two windows, one red front door and one brass letterbox each. But Mr Stick and Mr Stone did not look exactly alike. Oh no, they looked exactly different. Mr Stick was as thin and bony as a stick and Mr Stone was as fat and round as a stone and neither could bear the sight of the other. They quarrelled and squabbled and fought and fumed over everything. In his garden, Mr Stick grew only long, thin things like beans and cucumbers, carrots and leeks. In his garden, Mr Stone grew only round, fat things like tomatoes and apples, potatoes and plums. Each old man hated whatever the other grew. Tomatoes gave Mr Stick the tummy ache. Beans gave Mr Stone the backache. And cauliflowers gave them both the collywobbles. Sometimes, when they quarrelled especially hard, they threw things at each other over the fence. Mr Stone would hurl tomatoes at Mr Stick. Splat! Squidge! Mr Stick would fire beans at Mr Stone. Whizz! Ding! They did not get on at all. One day they noticed a peculiar thing. Mr Stick's clothes began to feel tight. He was growing fatter and rounder. Mr Stone's clothes began to feel loose. He was getting thinner and bonier. Each day it was worse. By the end of the week, Mr Stick couldn't get into any of his suits. He had to wear a cardboard box with holes in it where his arms and head poked through. And by the end of the same week, none of Mr Stone's clothes would stay on him, so he had to wear a plastic drain pipe with his head popping out at the top. Of course, neither wanted the other to see how silly he looked, and for another week they both stayed indoors. But eventually they had to go into the garden to fetch vegetables. Then Mr Stick saw Mr Stone, and Mr Stone saw Mr Stick. First they stared, then they giggled, then they guffawed, then when they couldn't laugh anymore, 
they decided the only thing to do was swap clothes. That is what they did. They fitted perfectly. Now Mr Stick wears Mr Stone's clothes and Mr Stone wears Mr Stick's clothes. And they don't throw vegetables at each other anymore. Fat Mr Stick has found that tomatoes don't give him tummy ache and thin Mr Stone has discovered that he doesn't get backache when he eats beans. Now they exchange their vegetables over the fence, wearing each other's clothes and big smiles. But they still don't like cauliflowers. Doris, Doris, listen. I've made up a poem. I like cauliflowers. They've got lots of bobbles. Cauliflowers, cauliflowers, give you collywobbles. Maurice, hmm? that is not a poem. It's a very silly little rhyme. My friend, Stephen, knows a real poem. Listen. The Naughty Cat. <laughs> My cat was rather naughty the day he spilt the milk, but he has eyes as green as grass and fur as smooth as silk. My cat was very naughty the day he ate my tea, but when he purrs I can't be cross, so I hold him close to me. My cat was extra naughty. My mum said, he's the end. You see, he scratched my granny, but he's still my closest friend. <coughs> Doris. Where are you going? To the far, far side of Magic Mountain. I've heard that all the trees and houses and roads are made of gold. You sound just like Dick Whittington. Who's Dick Whittington? Listen to the story and you'll find out. Dick Whittington and his cat. Dick Whittington lived with his mother in a little village in the middle of the countryside. Early one morning, he said to his mother... I want to have great adventures, Mother. I'm going to London to make my fortune. I've heard the streets of London are paved with gold. What nonsense you talk, said his mother. But before she could stop him, Dick had packed some bread and cheese into a handkerchief and set off on the road towards London. He walked and he walked all day until he could walk no more. When evening came, he lay down by the side of the road and fell fast asleep. In the middle of the night, Dick was woken by a tickling on his cheek. Opening his eyes, he saw a handsome black cat. Excuse me, sir, said the cat. My name is Tom. I've been walking all day and I'm very hungry. 
Well, Tom, said Dick, I haven't got very much food, but you're welcome to share my bread and cheese. They talked as they ate, and soon Dick and the cat were the greatest of friends. Next morning, they decided to continue the journey to London together. They walked and they walked, but still London seemed to be as far away as ever. Finally, Dick stopped. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom, he said. I can't go on any further. I'm going to turn round and go back home to my little village. At that moment, they heard the sound of bells. The bells seemed to be singing, Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Turn again, Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. The bells want you to go on, said Tom, and so do I. Maybe one day you really will be Lord Mayor. London can't be far. Let's keep walking. And sure enough, from the top of the next hill, the two friends could see the great city of London. Dick soon found work in the house of Mr Fitzwarren, and Tom made himself useful catching the rats and mice in Mr Fitzwarren's cellar. But the streets of London were not paved with gold, and Dick found it hard to make enough money to buy food, let alone make his fortune. He was very unhappy, until Mr Fitzwarren's daughter, Alice, took pity on him. Don't despair, Dick, she would say. I'm sure that one day you'll be Lord Mayor of London, and then you'll have all the money you need. Soon Dick and Alice fell in love, and they asked Alice's father if they could marry. Nonsense, cried Mr Fitzwarren. My daughter is going to marry a rich man, not a poor scoundrel like you, Dick. <coughs> Leaving Alice at home in London, Mr Fitzwarren took Dick and Tom with him on a sea voyage to far-off lands. On the way home, their ship visited a country which was overrun with rats. Please help me, Mr Fitzwarren, said the king. I have tried everything to rid my country of these rats, but still they eat all the food and my people are starving. Mr Fitzwarren did not know what to do, but Dick spoke up. Excuse me, sir, he said to the king. My cat Tom is very good at catching rats. Perhaps he can help you. Tom set to work, and in a few days there wasn't a rat to be seen in the whole kingdom. The king was overjoyed and decided to reward Dick. Because your cat has been so clever, Mr Whittington, he said, I shall allow you to marry my beautiful daughter Fatima. That's very kind of you, sir, said Dick, but I want to marry Mr Fitzwarren's daughter, Alice. Then how can I reward you? asked the king. Perhaps you could spare me some of your treasure, said Dick, just enough to marry Alice. Of course, said the king. Please take these three sacks of diamonds. Is there anything else you require? Well, said Dick, our ship is old and leaky after our long voyage. I don't suppose you could spare one of your magic carpets to take us all home to London. Certainly, said the king, and soon Dick and Tom and Mr Fitzwarren found themselves on a magic carpet flying high above the streets of London. They landed in the courtyard of Mr Fitzwarren's house. Look, Alice, cried Dick, look at this treasure. I've made my fortune. Will you marry me? Of course I will, said Alice, on the very day you become Lord Mayor of London. Dick worked and worked. He was always kind and helpful, and soon he was the most popular man in the whole of London. Dick Whittington for Lord Mayor, cried the people. Dick Whittington for Lord Mayor. And sure enough, Dick did become Lord Mayor of London, and Alice did marry him. On the day of the wedding, Dick and Alice and Tom rode through the streets of London in a beautiful golden coach and all the people waved and cheered. And the bells of the City of London rang out, Hail Richard Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Hail Richard Whittington, Lord Mayor of London. Cool! What an exciting story! Doris, if I walked all the way to tumble down town, do you think I'd end up being Lord Mayor of Magic Mountain? No, Morris. Somehow I don't think you would. Oh, well. I'm very happy where I am, really. And besides, Doris, I could never be where you weren't. 
We go well together, don't we? Like, um... Bacon and eggs? Yes, or, or shoes and socks, or, um... What other things go well together? Listen to the rhyme. Take your partners. Search the house for odds and ends. Put them together and let them make friends. Find some paper, clean and white. With pen or pencil, you can start to write. Soap is happiest in its place. A basin of water for washing your face. Is that your hat hanging over there? Then find a coat that's warm to wear. Salt is lost without its mate. So find some pepper to make food great. On the table, loaves of bread need some butter that's soft to spread. When you lift things up in the air, left hand, right hand, make a useful pair. How many odds and ends can you see that make good partners like you and me? Doris, have you seen Dotty the Dragon anywhere? Well, I happen to know she's having all her friends round for tea in her cave. All her friends? Well, what about us? All her dragon friends, that is. Oh, what a pity. Why? I wanted her to hear Carol's story. It's all about a dragon called Tarquin. Hey, Carol, Tarquin's not having tea at Dotty's, is he? Wait and see. The Tartan Dragon. Tarquin the dragon sat with his head in his hands, staring sadly at his reflection in a rock pool. Of all the dragony colours to choose from, he had to be tartan. Oh dear. Oh dear, dear, dear. A big tear slipped down his nose and plopped into the water. You won't scare anyone looking like that, the other dragons had said. And they were right, of course. All the storybooks had dragons that were blue or gold or green or purple. Nobody ever mentioned a tartan one. Tarquin heaved a deep sigh, who <sighs> blew his nose and turned to go back into his cave. Oh, don't go, said a voice. I've never met a real live dragon before. My name's Jenny. You won't bite or breathe fire at me, will you? Tarquin looked hurt. He had never bitten anyone in his life, and his mother had always told him that it was very bad manners to breathe fire at strangers. You see, I've heard lots of stories about dragons eating people like me, and you do look awfully frightening. Do I? said Tarquin, rather pleased with himself. He gave a little snort and sent a puff of smoke into the air. Yes, said Jenny, and very handsome too. Really? Do you mean it? Of course I do. My father is captain of the guard and all his soldiers wear the tartan. Why don't you come and meet him? Tarquin was delighted. What a day it was turning out to be. He breathed on his claws and polished them against the glittery tartan scales on his chest. Then he went home with Jenny and had tea. Well, my dear, we do seem to have a bit of a problem, said the captain. Tarquin is quite right when he says there's no place for him in storybooks, but there is one job I think he'd do very well. What's that? cried Jenny. Why, being a soda in the guards. We need someone to carry our banner, and who better than a tartan dragon? Tarquin was so pleased that he seized the guards' banner, and later, as he marched at the head of the column of soldiers, he smiled and thought... I wonder what the other dragons think of me now. They were, in fact, blue and green with envy. But there was nothing they could do. Except frighten people in storybooks, of course. Hello, hamsters. Look, it's Grandpa. 
Hello, Grandpa. I just thought I'd drop in and see how you are. Well, we're rather tired. I'm not. Why are you yawning, then? I'm not yawning. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Hamsters, hamsters, settle down. If you're very, very quiet, I'll sing you my song. Hooray! Morris! Who's got a beard down to his knees? Wears purple robes and speaks Chinese. Who makes delicious magic soup? Talks with a laugh and walks with a stoop. Grandpa, Grandpa, friend to every hamster. Grandpa, Grandpa, that's me. Grandpa, yes, I'm Grandpa. I'm old as the hills, but fiddle did dee. I'm a wizard at spells from abracadabra to open sesame and riddle me re. Grandpa, Grandpa, friend to every hamster. Grandpa, Grandpa, that's you. That's me. Grandpa, Grandpa, friend to every hamster. Grandpa, Grandpa, that's you. That's me. Bye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. We'll be back soon.